This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. I am the longest running cast member of the Nativity Ensemble of our church. Well, I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. Having Dan as part of our cast is fantastic. Lord, I am surely blessed beyond measure. Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, head, head. Let's, uh, let's just, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. But this time with more emotion, okay? Hey, I want you to Meryl Streep this up, okay? You got it. <sighs> Dan thinks he's helping, but all he does is compare everything to Meryl Streep. Tony, I need you to channel your inner Meryl. My dear Mary, stop. It is just, I need to Meryl this over for a minute. Oh, this is no way to treat your actors. Meryl would have seen this and walked immediately. Really, Dan? Because this potato salad looks so Meryl right now. Suddenly, the most splendiferous heavenly being appeared to my cohorts and me. Stick to the script, please. Okay, Joel, it's called the glory of Christmas. I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language, don't you think? It's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. By day, I make a living as an accountant, but a dedicated one. But a dedicated actor must lose themselves and fully become the character. Huh? Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, what's that smell? Green pastures. Green pastures, Annette. I am so method. I haven't bathed in a month. You really need to take a bath. I can't. These shepherds were society's misfits, you know. They were... Sure, transfixed by um, a, a choir of angels, but also amazed that God had chosen them. They were the scrawny kid in PE. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the nerd who went alone to the prom. Yeah, they were, um, they were the glee club president, twice. Yeah. They were the least of these. God asked me to be the keeper and the most important message that's ever been kept. To tell everyone that he sent the greatest gift ever, the Prince of Peace. The lowest in the land is given the highest honor. What's that smell? Let's open up in our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. And in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch and at night over their flock. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy. That will be for all people today in the city of David, a Savior who was born for you, who was the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace, honor to people 
he favors. And when the angel had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after seeing them, they reported the message, and they, they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. You may be seated. When you first look at the passage in chapter 2 of Luke, Anyone who's been in church in any amount of time, was in Sunday school, uh, you've heard this over and over and over again. And uh, for uh, a pastor, it's difficult to not preach the same thing every Christmas, but to present it in a new and refreshing way. And I want to just take a moment and go through the verses that I read to you earlier. If you leave your Bibles open, we're going to pick this apart a little bit, piece by piece, and Apply it to our lives today. So the first thing is, is that the shepherds are watching their flock, and an angel appears to them. You ever notice whenever an angel appears, he has to tell them not to be afraid? Yeah. I mean, like every single time an angel shows up, he first has to tell them not to be afraid. My boys were talking about and they were like, what in the world does that poor angel look like? That every time he shows up, I said, well, that's just because when they show up in the most unlikely of places at the most inopportune time or uh, in a place that they should never have been in the first place, they just pop up and then have to tell you, fear not, don't wet yourself, you know, because uh, I'm here with good news, not bad news. But anyway, the angel comes to them and he says, um, with the glory of the Lord shining around them, uh, he says, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. At this time of the season, we get so wrapped up in getting ready for what's coming. This week, we, uh, Christmas will be uh, on Friday, and so many will spend this week scrounging together the re remainder of the gifts that they need to purchase. The stocking stuffers. Kelly and I were out Saturday night uh, picking over what was left in poor Target after for looking for candy and stuff for the boys' stockings. You know, you're out there... Uh, picking up those last minute gifts, getting the last minute things that you need for dinner, picking up the turkey, picking up the ham, picking up the side dishes, the cranberry sauce that's in a can that when you pour it out, it still looks like the shape of the can. You know what I'm mean? We're out there focused on all of these things. But when's the last time you and I really sat back and thought about what that angel said? That this was good news of great joy. We as Christians have become to the, desensitized to the message of Christmas. Amen. Christmas, even though we have our little pageants and we have our programs and we have the Christmas songs and we all sing and talk, uh, we've missed the good news and the great joy. Amen. And before we can look at the rest of this passage, we must understand that the coming of the Savior was the biggest news that had happened in over 400 years. In fact, from the end of the New Testament to when Christ comes was 400 years of silence from God. Nothing said from God to his people, to this world, because he was saving the best for last. His son. The plan that had been made way back in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve fell in Genesis chapter 3, God says, I am sending the seed of the woman. The snake will try to bite his heel, but he will crush. This seed will crush his head. Amen. It's hard. It's easy for you and I to take for granted that Christ came, that God gave up his throne in heaven to come to earth, to be born in human flesh, Amen. to a God who never felt pain, a God who never shed tears, a God who never felt sickness. A God who did not know what it was to live in flesh. To suffer and uh, to, to feel the uh, range of emotions. Yes. To weep for his friend who dies. Yes. To feel the strike of every whiplash. To feel the rejection of his own people yes. as they stood and mocked him and smacked him in the face. That's good news. 
news in great joy that our God would be willing to suffer in such a way so that you and I could be reconciled to him. We do not have to be lost, but we can be found. Because of the good news, great joy that Jesus Christ was born Amen. to a virgin named Mary mm -hmm. so that you and I could be saved. Amen. Amen. For the whole world is lost. For all have sinned Amen. and all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. No one on the face of this earth deserves salvation. No one on the face of this earth deserves the attention of God. Yet God gave that attention anyways. And he gave his grace anyways. And he gave his mercy anyways. Yeah. Why? Because God so loved us. Yeah. God so loved the world that it was worth it to send his one and only son who would die upon the cross so that you and I could be saved. That's good news. Right. Great joy. Amen. I pray this Christmas that our hearts, in light of all the suffering that's going on in the world and all the unrest in the United States of America and all the craziness that's happening, that God would ignite the fire in our hearts like he did the day that you and I accepted him as Lord and Savior, that we too would recognize what the angels saw, what the angel proclaimed, and what the shepherds heard, that this was good news. This was great joy. Yes, yes. Because of the coming of Christ, man could have an abundant life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life abundantly. Because of the coming of Christ, you and I can rejoice and be joyful in spite of circumstances. Because I have a hope that's greater than what this world is. I have a hope that's greater than the president. I have a hope that's greater than anything in this world. Why? Because someday I'm going to walk streets of gold. And someday I'm going to find myself in the presence of the very God who sacrificed himself for me. I'll never cry again. I'll never have pain again. I'll never see death again. I'll never see sickness again. Amen. That's good news Amen. and great joy. We can rejoice Amen. in spite of suffering and pain Amen. because of the good news and the great joy of the coming of our Savior. Amen. Yes. Oh, let God... Uh, Allow the light to shine within us. Allow the, remember how excited we were when we first found out that we could have a relationship with God through the life and the death of his son. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's where it starts. Amen. Is it starts with remembering, remembering what the coming of Christ means Amen. to us as believers. Yes. Amen. Not simply a time of getting together with the family members that we haven't seen. It's not simply a time of buying presents and receiving presents. It's not a time of celebrating lights. It's a time of celebrating our Savior. Amen. The one who gave up all Amen. to give us the greatest gift of all. Amen. That's where it starts this Christmas season. To be reminded that it's good news, great joy. Yes. And second is this. These were shepherds. And many theologians believe that these shepherds were actually taking care of the Passover lambs for Passover. Which immediately made them unclean. Now, in the religious world of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, to be unclean meant that you couldn't go to the temple. It meant that you could not go to pray. You were unclean until you went through a ritual where you would be clean. Unfortunately for shepherds, it was a 24-7 job. So therefore, you were with the sheep all day, all night long. You did not have a chance to cleanse yourself. You were unclean. Yet to these unclean shepherds who the world looked down upon, the ones who the religious elect needed but despised, Amen. the ones that the religious leaders rejected and looked down upon, they were the ones to whom God chose to give the message. He did not appear to Pharisees. 
He did not appear to the lawyers and the scribes. He didn't appear to the religious elite. He appeared to lowly shepherds to tell them of this good news and this great joy. Why? Because the message of salvation is for everyone. It is for the rich and the poor. It's for the doctor and the welder. It's for everyone. It's for the, no matter what your race is, economic status is, it is for you. Amen. It's for me. Those of the world deem unsavable, the gospel is for them. Amen. Those of the world rejects, God accepts. Amen. The gospel is for everyone. Amen. And there is nothing that you and I could have done in our past and in our present that will prevent the gospel from renewing our life. Amen. From changing our lives. Don't let the enemy steal what God's greatest gift was and continues to be from us because of guilt and shame of what we used to be or what we currently think we are. Because when God sees you, God sees one of his creations. He sees one of his children who he wants to be saved. The Bible says that God is not slack according to his promises, but he is long-suffering, being in his will that all should come to repentance. Amen. His desire that all would be saved, and that word all does includes everyone. It is all-inclusive. Yes. Regardless of nationality, regardless of social economic status, regardless of what the world says. Right. The gospel is for the man on the street who has no place to go. The gospel is for the woman on the street who has a babe in a month. The gospel is for those who the world rejects. Amen. Not just for the well-dressed. Not just for the church of five or ten thousand. Not just for the person in the three-piece suit through the Armani suit. It's for everyone. Amen. And the Bible says here that when the shepherds got the message, the first thing they did is they went up and they went to find the Savior. And the second thing they did, the second thing was they went and told everyone. These dirty, smelly, unclean shepherds left their flocks to go tell everyone that they had seen the Savior. So the message is for everyone. Mm -hmm. And the message is to be shared by everyone. Yes. Amen. This Christmas, who and who have you and I shared the gift with? Who have you and I shared Christ with? At the store? In our families? on the street corner. Who have you and I shared the gospel with while we were out running and buying presents? While we were out running and picking up food? While we were out running celebrating uh, people coming in to visit us? Who did we share Christ with? Amen. Because this is good news and great joy. And if we see it as good news and great joy, we should, like the shepherds, proclaim it. Yes. And no one is precluded from proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. The proclamation of his gift is not limited to a pastor on Sunday mornings. For if it was only limited to a pastor on Sunday mornings, the message would die. Yeah. No, the message is to be shared by everyone who knows Christ as Lord and Savior. No one is exempt from sharing that message. Amen. No one, if you know Christ as Lord and Savior, you're not too good and you're not too bad to share the message. Right. We live in a world where we like to come to church and we like to sit on the pews and we like to hear and we like to say, oh, we're Christians, yet we do not share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we have a mandate from God himself, which was to go ye therefore into all nations, teaching everything that I've commanded you. We have a responsibility to share the news that Jesus Christ has come and he has died, and he has risen, and he is living again. Mm -hmm. 
that he is eternal and forever and that the pain that this world endures and the lack of comfort and the lack of joy and the lack of peace is due to the fact that they are separated from God and if they would simply call upon him and give themselves to him this season that Christ would give them a gift that can never be matched that can never be surmounted it is a gift that is an eternal gift how many people can offer permanent peace? How many people can offer permanent joy in this world today? We offer quick fixes in this world today. We have our motivational speakers. We even have our motivational speakers in the church that only preach the good and not of the judgment, that only preach heaven and don't preach about hell. We've got all these people in this world today who are all getting, men, uh, 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 getting uh, just small glimpses of peace and joy that only last for a short time. But you and I have a gift that we can give that is eternal, that promises peace at all times, joy at all times, comfort at all times, that promises we don't have to fear or have anxiety because God holds us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Amen. That come what may in this world, our hope is not in this world. As I said earlier, we have a message to give, a ready-made message that God prepared to give to people that do not know him, people who are suffering right now, who have felt lost, lost their businesses, have lost their homes, have lost family members, people who are experiencing great pain. Right now is the time for the church to share that the answer to their pain and their suffering came on Christmas Day and a little bundle in a manger born of a woman whose father is God. That is the message. Amen. Merely confessing our sins and we are saved. Amen. That's what Paul, what Paul writes in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. If we will confess with the mouth of our Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that he has risen from the dead, then you are saved. Amen. Yes. That's all that's required. A confession of Christ as Lord, meaning that I take whatever else I've set on the throne of my life is God and I tear it down and I set Christ as my God and my Savior. I promote him to be Lord of my life, to set upon the throne of my heart. Amen. That's what it means to confess him as Lord and as Savior. It means that when I confess him as Lord, it means that I put him in control. Right. And we have Christians that haven't even properly uh, that, that have, have not properly confessed him as Lord. Right. Yeah. Right? That have allowed him to sit on the throne for a certain amount of time, but as soon as the honeymoon period's over, we start setting idols next to him. Come on. Amen. Maybe that's one reason we've watered down the message. It's because you can't preach the gospel when you have compromised the gospel. Amen. Yeah. You can't preach the gospel in its truest sense. And you can't preach it with passion and authority and with boldness and conviction if you've compromised it in your life. Amen. Amen. If we set idols next to Christ, we cannot preach the gospel for the conviction that overcomes us. Amen. We have a calling as Christians, every single believer, to present the gospel regardless. So we should do an introspection this morning to say why are we not sharing what changed our lives? Mm. You don't share it because you don't care. We don't share it because we're completely and utterly apathetic. We don't share it because of conviction of sin. We don't share it because we really down deep inside don't believe it's true. Mm. That God really can change a life. But I've seen it with my own eyes and take someone, my father who spent over 50 years of his life rejecting God and cursing God, the man that was hard beyond measure, hard as a rock, he would rather curse you than say good morning to you. But I watched God overnight change his life from a man who never would cry in front of his children because men crying was weakness. He cried in front of his boys. I remember when he took me into the chapel, 
just before his last surgeon, last time I got to see him alive. And he prayed with me and my brother. And he cried in front of me and my brother. That was a man changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. A man changed whose every word was a curse word. To now suddenly he didn't even take the Lord's name in vain or say any curse words whatsoever. A man who changed completely. He only had a few weeks of change before his life was taken. But he had change. Change that impacted me and my brothers that saw a man who was hopelessly lost suddenly become found. Yeah. If you have lost family members and lost friends, today is the day of salvation. Don't put off sharing the message with them any longer. Amen. But share. Be Christ's hands. Be Christ's feet. Yes. Be Christ's voice and a lost and a dying world. That is the message of Christmas. Yes. Yes. It is a challenge to believers to share the good news, great joy of our Savior come and our deliverance from sin and reconciliation to God. Yes. Amen. That is the message of Christmas. Yes. A message we learn from some dirty, smelly shepherds. who did not deem themselves unworthy to share the message, but went and told everyone. Amen. Who did not allow themselves to be puffed up with pride because they were chosen to have the message revealed to them. They still went and told everyone. Amen. Let us stand. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that you enjoyed it and were blessed by it. Each month we have people from all over the world who listen to the messages made available. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you consider making a donation of any amount to help support us as we continue to reach the loss for Christ? Donations can be made online at www.reviveoc.org or by check at Revive Outreach Church, 411 Chatham Heights Road, Suite 101, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 224. Thank you for your prayers and your continued support. May God richly bless you.